Welcome to the fall sports season finale of this week in Princeton Viking Sports here on ESP Media, powered by Sidearm Sports and VikeNation.org. I'm Jason Griefer. We're joined once again by Princeton Athletic Director Joe Roberts. Joe, good to talk to you one more time. Uh, playoffs, state tournaments abound right now. Pretty busy time up there for you. Yeah, it is, Jason, you know, and here we are now. We're st finally starting to battle the elements with today's rain. So uh, <laughs> add all of it together and just a few short weeks, we'll probably have some snow on the ground. So it's been a great, great fall. Yeah, that definitely has one, weather changing all over the place. That's for sure. Let's get right into it. Let's start talking about some of your teams here. Let's start with the cross country. They were in the, the GMC championships uh, over the weekend there. The boys, t boys finished eighth. The girls finished seventh there so now they take that and now move forward to to the postseason this weekend they got the districts coming up there and so uh you know it's it's been a very very tough year but you've also had a, a very 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 difficult gmc uh, all year long from top to bottom on, on both sides both the boys uh, and the girls uh, how would you evaluate this season for your cross-country programs given how difficult of a gmc they've had to deal with you know, I, I think we've had a successful, you know, season this year in cross country, you know, uh, it was a great day on Saturday. The weather was great. Hats off to um, Rich Bryant and the entire staff at Lakota East for hosting the event, Voice of America Park, obviously uh, our district site as well, but um, incredible venue, incredible course for our kids to get out there and compete on. And, you know, um, like we've talked about all year, cross country is, is a building and continuing to build on some great momentum. Um, I saw, I believe, I, well, I caught it early Saturday morning, Grace Abrams committed to the University of Akron. So we're really excited about that opportunity. And I think what we had talked about after our invite was how she has just been battling injury after injury after injury throughout her career. And then to kind of see this kind of come to a, you know, almost a, a head and, and reaching that pinnacle of continuing her running career beyond high school, that's an incredible accomplishment for her. Uh, and again, going back to watching some of the student athletes like like M and uh, the others that that didn't have water polo this fall to be able to go out and run cross country and, and do some things there. It was just a, it's really good. And now it's it's either you're in or you're out. So uh, it depends on what what the kids have left to drive in their mind and, and in their body to continue to push forward. We're at a pure individual uh, point now uh, in terms of you've got to hit that time that you need to advance yourself through. Uh, we may not have enough runners across the board to advance an entire team, but we could come out there and, and do some things, uh, you know, to kind of shock a little bit. But from an individual standpoint, we certainly have both on the boys' side and the girls' side enough to get us through individually if they, if they can run their race and continue to, to push uh, to those new heights. Talked to, just a second ago there about Grace Abrams committing to run in Akron. That, that's a pretty big deal. You know, any anytime a, 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 yeah. a student athlete gets a chance to to not only compete at the next level but do it at Division One, how big of a shot does that give the the team or or the or the, the school in general that you see a runner like this, who, as you said, has battled a lot of injuries and still is going to go on and run at the Division One level? Yeah, you know, I think it 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 really kind of sets a, another tone to where we are, and you know, and you take you you take a runner here and a runner there that goes on and run, a distance runner. You know, we, we can certainly rack up the sprinters that have had just tremendous accomplishments. But going back to last year with Maria and what she was able to do to kind of kind of set that that bar a little bit, if you will. But now moving in, you know, and you, you grab a couple of kids and it starts to get noticed that, hey, I can go run on beyond high school and in college and division one is a possibility. Yeah. Um, it it it'll attract people and so that's really where you can start building some good foundation moving forward let's move on to uh boys golf we talked to uh, talked in the last week about the postseason peyton leach gets through to the districts uh, yeah. tough tough field out at a beaver creek and things just it didn't go his way there so he doesn't advance to to beyond the districts but still uh, you know not a bad year for him he does return next year and looking at the roster you're going to have a lot of talent coming back next year, a lot of young talent that's had a year of experience at the varsity level uh, under their belt. Uh, how important has this experience been for not only Peyton in the postseason, but for the rest of this young group throughout this season to get that experience and taking that into 2021? Well, I think it's critical. And, you know, I, I got a chance to go to Beaver Creek 
uh, for districts that day to watch Peyton a little for a little bit. I mean, the elements were just incredible. You know, they were battling rain and, and it was cold and the wind. And uh, you could certainly see the nerves that he had. Some of it was excitement nerves. Some of it was just the fact that uh, I don't even know what I'm getting into yet. But he held it in there, and I thought 48-48 is pretty darn good score uh, for what he did. And um, he, he, he continued to walk his way through that golf course. Again, extremely difficult conditions, extremely difficult course um, against extremely good talent. I mean, there were some kids out there that just – they flat hit the ball, they flat position the ball, and they, you know, and they know how to get up and down around the green. So, um, but it shows you, it's kind of like when we were talking about just a minute ago with cross country. Now we've had an individual get us through and get to districts. And now you see young student athletes that are starting to play golf, that are coming through the program, that are starting to get the interest, that are going to start putting in the time uh, to show that they can do these things and that they can compete at that level and let's get beyond districts. And I, one of the things that I kept hearing about was I was walking around the course is next year it's at Glenview. Next year it's at Glenview. So it's in our backyard. Yeah. And so now you start to see, hey, listen, that, I, I can play at home and, and be in my backyard and get a chance to do that. So I think, you know, Coach Bagley's just got to keep promoting these kids and he's got to keep uh, giving them opportunities to play and practice. Uh, our friends at the Tri-County Golf Ranch uh, offer wonderful winter programs. They got those heated tees in the in their driving range, and there's just an opportunity if you want to get better to jump out there and get it. Yep. And they do a, such a tremendous job of helping our kids there. So um, we have a chance to really do some things moving forward in golf in the next few years. And they're looking forward to that again. A very very young team that got a lot of experience this year, and especially if you get the chance that you get to play in your backyard next year it's uh so it looks looks to me on paper anyway it sets up pretty well uh for the for the program going forward and that's certainly a good thing uh let's move on let's talk about the tennis here and uh we've talked a lot about brooklyn bowen in, in past episodes and in, in, in the season she's had uh she got to the second round of the districts and, and and it came to an end there so you know now her her time at princeton on the tennis courts is, is has drawn to a close she's going to graduate Pretty big hole to fill going forward there, given how good Brooklyn's been throughout her career. So where do the coaches turn to try to fill that gap that Brooklyn is leaving behind? Well, we'll just we'll lean on the youth a little bit. But, you know, Brooklyn, uh, we got we got over there and saw her uh, play her first match against Vandalia Butler. And, and the young girl from Vandalia Butler, I was talking to their athletic director, a freshman, had only been playing tennis for about 15 months. Uh, just kind of got into it a little bit, and so uh, gave her gave Brooklyn everything that she could pop, possibly ask for. It was a great match, um, and then you know just advanced and, and kind of came up short against the the uh, single player from Walnut Hills, which uh, from what I understand she's she's probably got a, a pretty bright future in front of her as well. But Brooklyn uh, is a Viking through and through, and just showed tremendous heart and tremendous spirit, and I think the world of the girl. Um, she has got a bright future in front of her. Again, she's going to continue playing tennis beyond high school. Uh, she's identified about five or six schools that she would really like to hone in on uh, and, and go try to uh, move on and, and continue her tennis career. So uh, we're going to help her in any way we can with that opportunity as well. Um, and just she just represented Bike Nation Tennis uh, in such a great manner. But we'll, you know, Coach Brennan will just jump right back in and and uh, I think it was the next day he started sending me next year's schedule. And I started looking at what, what he had from a non-conference standpoint. And, yeah. and one of the great things about Princeton is the fact that our facilities are, are just second to none. And uh -huh. um, he said to me, he said, do you have any problem at all? These, the schools want to come here and play. And that, you know, now we're not traveling. I said, I don't care if we have all home matches. It's fine <laughs> with me. You know, it gives us a better chance to be able to see the kids. But it also gives yeah. us a chance to showcase what we have to offer. Yeah. And when when people in our community see our facilities being used in that manner, now someone's going to say, hey, I can play tennis too. And that's going to help build our program and help grow what we're trying to do. So, you know, obviously we may be a little down on the single side uh, or young on the single side next year. But, I, you know, now we're going to focus on what we're doing on the double section and see where, where that can go. And, and I think he just is going to do a great job of keep building that program and We'll reach in and find one of these young ladies that's ready to step up and take the reins. 
Yeah, I would certainly uh, agree with the with your sentiment there about your facilities being second to none, no matter the sport. You know, we we've covered some uh, volleyball matches in inside the inside the arena there. We I got a chance to check out your water polo facility again right there. Tennis, as you said, you know, football as well. The Pat Mancuso Field's a, a joy to be at. And uh, speaking of which, uh, boys soccer is going to be there. Uh, tonight yeah. to be to begin this to begin the playoffs they're going to take on Moeller this game was originally scheduled to be played at Moeller it has now been moved to Princeton so you're going to get a home match in in the uh, in the first round of the tournament and, and we've talked here on the show about how good Cole Walker has been and I, and I mm-hmm. said it uh, either here or on a broadcast of of, of boys soccer on watch hsports.tv that if he's not in consideration for an all GMC honor that the vote shouldn't even be had yeah. Uh, he's been that good all year long. Having said that, you're going to take on a Moeller team that is completely turned its roster over from a year ago. They lost 13 seniors, and their best underclassmen went on to the FC Cincinnati Academy. So they've had a very, very young team. Do you, if you, do you believe though, if you get solid backline play in front of Cole, that you can still go in and beat Moeller here? Because and and, I've, and that's no small thing because everybody knows how Moeller has been. For a long, long time, they are a terrific GCL uh, program. They're a power program there. So if you get backline play and you're able to knock off Moeller, how big would that be for this program? Oh, it'll be a staple. I, it, it will. It'll be a, it'll be a benchmark win uh, for our kids and for our soccer program. Also, because of who it is, you know. Let, let's take take soccer out of the equation. It's Princeton Moeller. Mm-hmm. We all know about that rich battle, fierce rivalry that happened in, for so many years in football. Well, now we just transcended into some other sports. And so in that part of it as well, and what you just said, Jason, a minute ago is, is 100% correct. That backline defense has to protect Cole so Cole can get the offense going. And, and I think we have, we certainly have the attack game. We certainly have the speed game. Uh, it's not the same Moeller team that it has been in the past. And that's not any disrespect to Moeller because they're still a heck of a soccer program. Mm-hmm. They're just a young soccer program and they're retooling and rebuilding and rehoning their skills of their game. Yep. Where we have been together uh, at least for the last three years, three seasons together as far as a, t- a complete unit. So we have a chance tonight to get back on our home field. We'll still be the visiting team because of seating procedures, but that doesn't mean anything. We're playing here. The weather conditions just aren't going to let us play over at Moeller tonight, you know, five o'clock and uh, let's get out there and let's just get after it early. And I think if we can get after it early and maybe make some quick scores, then we probably can, you know, we can advance through tonight. So uh, it's going to be a very, very great soccer match for our boys program. Yeah. Really good chance to uh, get, as you said, a signature win. Uh, for the program over on the girls side uh, they've drawn St. Ursula in, in round one of the playoffs uh, they'll get going on Tuesday uh, we got a chance to uh, to see them uh, twice last week the first match against Carroll was called unfortunately at halftime due to uh, due to lightning in the area so only got to see half there How, however really really nice performance on Saturday against Talawanda which we had that one on watch hsports.tv uh, you get you get four in the match, four tallies in the match, two of them from Allie Lindblad. But I also was really impressed getting two goals and an assist from Diana Carter Hartley. She's supposed to be a, supposed to be on that backline defense, and we saw her play up a little bit more in the midfield and got a couple uh, to go in from distance. So they've scored seven in their last two after a really rough stretch offensively where they just couldn't seem to get it together. Now they have. How uh, looking to get past the first round for the first time since 2017 with these two finding the net the way they have again in that match against Talawana and even before that with Ali scoring twice against Cole Rain. How big are those two going to play in this match against St. Ursula if you're going to try to move on to the second round? Well, it's almost a David Goliath type uh situation in, in terms of where we are uh with Ursula and and how how formidable they can they can be in, in their their offensive uh, sets and, and how quick they can attack. But you're right. I mean, we've got some really good momentum going. We've, we've seen some really good things the last four matches. Uh, Saturday really kind of, kind of, you know, set the tone, if you will, for postseason and gave the girls a little bit of confidence, a little bit of, you know, it's hard when you're coming off the regular season if, if, without, without a win. 
yeah. um, get the postseason play going. Um, but it's even tougher uh, if you were to completely, you know, be out of your game. And I don't think that we're out of our game any longer. I think our girls are finally starting to come into some stride. I think that uh, from an from an offensive perspective, they seem to be passing the ball much better, yep. um, and that really does help. Uh, but it's same the same conversation we talk about on the boys' side. We can talk about on the girls' side. You know, if we can keep that defense just go straight across the line at the thirty, and keep them in a solid formation. Maybe move that striker up if you if you will. But yep. if we can keep them there to protect the goal, and then keep the offense beyond the fifty or at the 50 at least, and just kind of work the ball back and forth from there, I think we have a chance to really open some things up and, and get the goals. I think Allie will certainly provide a lot of speed out there uh, that's going to be able to get around some some uh, some of their defenders. So so it's going to be a really interesting night down in Clifton uh, tomorrow night, and I'll head down and watch that as well. I also want to give a, a call to uh, Hannah Reed, who has been one of the yeah. more technically gifted players I've seen uh, this season, just so sure-footed when she has the, the ball on her feet, works in and out of defenders with ease, can move the ball forward, can strike on her own if she needs to, but just so good in that midfield, uh, Hannah Reed is. She, she's been really impressive to watch uh, for sure. Let's move on. Let's talk about volleyball. They're on the verge of the postseason as well. They're going to get Hamilton to start things out. Draw didn't really do you any favors because if you, you you beat Hamilton, you've got Mount Notre Dame waiting in round two. So that's going to be a, a, an uphill battle, but we got to get past Hamilton first. And, that, and I know that's where Coach Sparks is focused. This this is another season where the GMC was just loaded once again with, you know, Mason, both Lakota schools uh, playing very, very well yeah. as well. And there was just no nights off in, in the GMC for sure. You're going to lose a lot of players off this team. A lot of seniors are going to depart off this team. I believe seven of them will graduate have you already have you already begun to look at offseason planning and where you go from here? And when you actually sit down with Coach Sparks to discuss the offseason, what are some of the things you're going to touch on? Well, we're you know we've already started and from her and I from our perspective we've started scheduling uh, for next year and trying to uh, look at some different avenues. We're not really going to change the schedule as much as uh, as we are in, in maybe boys soccer. We're trying to fluctuate some things in boys soccer a little bit, but. Um, we're looking at trying to just move some pieces around. Uh, she is going to be very young, but she's very talented at the younger level. And uh, the seniors have helped build that talent for these younger these younger players. And 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 all the credit goes to what they've been able to do to hang together. And, and um, you know, the other night we finished not the way we wanted to finish, but we took that to four. And um, our girls hung in there and fought the entire time and it never and never once had a letdown at any point. Um, but again, our conference just is such a, it's such a difficult conference to get through yep. um, top to bottom, which I, which I personally believe is the best reason why it gets us ready for the postseason. Um, you know, and so we're going to go against our league opponent, big blue uh, Wednesday night up there at Lakota East. And, and she and I did talk about like, it's critical. It's a critical point for us. That's a staple uh, opportunity for us to win that first match, to win that first game and get us into uh, MND. And then, you know what, let's just go get it, you know, but, but I think a lot could be said and a lot of momentum and, and uh, great opportunity could be in front of us. If we, if we can go ahead and take care of business against Hamilton, I think our, it'll be good for, for our seniors. It'll be good for our underclassmen. It'll be really good for our coaches because It'll show everyone everything that we've done all season long, including since last March and April when the pandemic hit. Everything that we've had to do along the way, all of our off-season stuff was cut kind of short. And, yep. and the regulations and the things we've had to do to kind of even get to this season, it'll kind of be, it'll be a reward for them. So, you know, we've got to go out there and play our game. We've got to be aggressive. And, you know, we've got to find those spots that we need to serve the ball to so that then we can turn around and, and have a little bit of edge on us and get into that next round. So looking forward to that match against Hamilton, that rematch against Hamilton and where it will take us. Here on the, the season finale of the fall sports season, we can't help but not talk about the big one that took place uh, last Friday night. And that was your football team in a – thriller against elder but you come up short elder gets the win 26 
21. Your your team's driving late for the for the game winning score within the last couple of minutes, and unfortunately, fumble the ball away inside the 15 yard line. So the playoff run comes to an end here. It was a you know a, a big deal, obviously, a chance to get to to the next round. What would eventually been could have been a re a matchup, I should say, with St. X. Uh, what was your take on the game, and and what what have you discussed with uh, Coach Daniels? Well, I you know it, it's still it, it's still kind of sitting with us. Um, I was went in the locker room after the game, and that was the only time I've talked to Coach since. I I let him go, let him kind of be for the weekend, him and his staff, and and uh, you know we just hugged and told each other that you know it's what what can you do, what can you say, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I I felt like the whole night. Um, we had some momentum going very early in that football game and uh, we get out there and we start and then I just felt like we went away from our game a little bit mm -hmm. and I think we went away from what we were trying to do to kind of get them off of their their uh, pattern in their game and they just stuck to what they were doing and then you get you get down a score and then all of a sudden it's really hard to adjust I, I kind of thought the turning point in the, in the game the entire evening was that was that safety because when that happened, you know, it just kind of shifted our mindset a little bit. But then we turn around and we come back out the second half and we drive down and score. Uh, and then you think, oh, man, we're going to get back in this. And Leroy Bowers, just tremendous effort on that, that interception and, and our defense. But hats off to Elder. I mean, you know, they're a fundamentally sound football program. Um, the Vikings uh, gave it what they could. And, you know, I take nothing away from that because we left, we did, we left it all out on the field. I will say that for our kids. And, you know, they had nothing left in them when they, when they, uh, when they came off there um, to our senior football players, you know, tremendous leadership and tremendous uh, congratulations to what they've done and helped bringing our young, young players up. The future is certainly bright for the Vikings. And, um, you know, you certainly don't want to go out the way we went out, but we talked about this last Monday that it was going to be almost whoever had the ball at the end of the game is going to win. Yep. And it almost came down to that, you know, it just, uh, uh, whether he was down, whether Thomas was down or not is, is not for me to judge, but um, you got to hold on to that football yep. and it just slipped out. And that's nothing that, you know, that's not anyone's fault. That, that really isn't anyone's fault. That's part of the game. And um, I'm, I'm really proud of how, how Thomas handled himself after the game. I'm really proud of how, how our coaches have been able to, to be a role model for our student athletes. And, and they were all in the locker room hugging one another after the game and telling them how much they love them. And, you know, I watched our line coaches pull the linemen outside of the locker room because, you know, everybody's kind of in a space and guys are trying to get their, turn their uniforms in and do what they need to do. And they pulled them all out together and just, kind of banned them in there and told them how proud they were of them and, and yeah. not to hang their heads and that, yes, this loss is going to sting and it's going to hurt, but, you know, we're, we're all in this together. And I just, I just watched that motion and see how that, that played out. And what a different team it was from last year's. And, you know, last year we just had this highly touted uh, power offensive and defensive juggernaut powerhouse and this year, it wasn't like that. You know, it wasn't like people were, were rating us and saying, oh, look at all this, this high-level talent. No, we were, we were the Princeton Vikings, and we were just blowing through people and doing what we had to do and, and just hitting a lot of milestones for our kids. And I just – I really am excited about what they're going to be able to pull forward through next year. We got – you know, they got to take this week to kind of get their, their mentally refocused or recharge themselves, but they got to get back to work. And – uh you know, they, they still have a lot in front of them that they can do. And so I'm really excited for them. Again, proud of the coaches and what they've been able to accomplish this year. They certainly left it on the, all on the field. And really all of your student athletes have been able to, uh, to, to, to say the same thing throughout this fall season, that's for sure. As we're winding down here to wrap up the fall season, starting to move our focus forward towards the winter season. Of course, we still have some athletes in the, in the, in the, in the postseason right now in fall. But the next time we reconvene here on the podcast will be to talk about the winter season. Uh, what can you tell us and what can you tell Vikings fans about some of the things we'll talk about when the winter sports season arrives? Well, uh, you know, we're going to have a winter coaches meeting this evening uh, after our 
we'll have the soccer match. And then this evening, we're going to get together with our winter coaches. And, and really right now, we're kind of breaking the ground on what it's going to look like in terms of protocols, because we, we don't really know what it'll be, uh, what what's lies in front of us. But um, yeah. I'm excited about what Coach Wyant's about to bring for our boys basketball program. There's been tremendous energy uh, among, the, among the hallways and in the gyms. Uh, he's been actively going doing uh, open gyms and conditioning and, and the individual workout sessions that, that he's permitted to do. Uh, I'm excited about what Coach Phillips is about to put out there uh, for the girls basketball program. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she's been getting the girls back in the gyms and they've been getting a lot of shots up and, and getting ready uh, for the season. And, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of, I, I don't know, we met with the swim coaches. I, I sat down with them last week and discussed it as I, I don't know what we're going to do yet. I really don't, you know, but um, our numbers are up. Uh, you know, I think our girls have about 25 right now that are they're going to swim. So so we're looking at, at, at a continuation of a, a building program there and kind of moving that uh, into a new direction. And, and then wrestling, uh, Coach Powell's been doing a little bit of, of uh, open mat or, or conditioning with his kids. And we've only had about eight down there right now. And our goal there is to fill every weight class. So we've got to get all 14 back on the mat and kind of see where, where that'll take us. Um, Coach Braddocks and Coach Smith don't really know what they're going to do with indoor track. Uh, they know that they're going to really limit the number of meets if there are uh, indoor track meets this year because most of the universities aren't posting anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, that doesn't take away from the conditioning and the amount of time they're going to spend with the kids in preparing them uh, from the indoor schedule to move them to the outdoor schedule. Yep. Looking forward to what Coach Wilson's going to be able to do with the bowling program this year, and then and then tying that into what Coach Franklin and, uh, is going to do with chess and Coach Mulholland with the academic quiz team. Um, it's going to be a great great winter. But I will say this: if it's anything like this fall, it'll be gone before we know it because this <laughs> this fall flew, and I, I cannot believe we're at postseason already. We, we are here, and uh, it, it's certainly flown by here uh, on the podcast as well. Uh, re very, very exciting fall season it's been. It's been a lot of fun to talk about here each and every week, Joe. Certainly appreciate the time, and we'll look forward to talking about the winter. Yeah, thank you, Jason. I, I, love, I love doing this with you guys on Monday mornings. It's a great way to start the day. We certainly enjoy it as well. That is Princeton Athletic Director Joe Roberts joining us to wrap up the fall sports season on This Week in Princeton Viking Sports here on ESP Media, powered by Sidearm Sports.